Susan Collins, United States Senator, Republican from Maine, she voted to acquit President Trump yesterday on both counts. Susan Collins joins us from the Capitol. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Nice to be with you, Greg. First off, I want to talk to you about your Republican colleague, Mitt Romney. In the end, as you know, he decided to vote for conviction on abuse of power. You did not on both counts. Do you think Mitt Romney was wrong in what he did yesterday? I reached a different conclusion than Mitt did. I have a lot of respect for him, so I don't criticize his decision. But in my view, the House did not come close to uh, proving in a compelling way that the president's conduct, however flawed it may have been, reached the constitutional standard of high crimes and misdemeanors. And that's what I applied. So the censure, there is talk of censure, potentially a censor resolution. Do you think that could happen? And if it did, would you support it? At this point, I think we're past censure. If the House had originally passed a censure resolution, instead of leaping quickly to impeachment and producing a purely partisan result in the House, um, a censure motion might have had some momentum or some sort of reprimand. But if you think about it, the president has been impeached. He has been criticized by members on both sides of the aisle in the Senate for making an improper request of a foreign government, even though he had some mixed motives in doing so. And I tend to believe that that is reprimand enough for the president. John Bolton, the former national security advisor, do you still want to hear from him? Do we need to hear from him in some official forum? John Bolton should have been subpoenaed by the House as part of its inquiry. That was one of the flaws of the House's inquiry. They did not even bother to issue a subpoena to John Bolton, and yet they describe him as being the key witness. And then in another case, they withdrew a subpoena to Dr. Charles Kupperman, another key national security aid just as soon as he went to court to get guidance from a judge, a neutral third party, on whether or not he should comply with the subpoena. So at this point, it would be interesting to hear what John Bolton uh, has to say, but we're past that stage where it would have much of an impact. To me, the House should have subpoenaed him as part of its initial inquiry. So for you, do you think this case is closed right now? Is the case closed regarding the phone call, all matters related to this impeachment? Case closed? I do view the case as closed, and I think that uh, the voters this fall will have an opportunity to pass judgment. And after all, one of the reasons that the framers made it so difficult to impeach and convict a president, they required a two-thirds vote, a very high bar for uh, convicting a president, is because removing a duly elected president and preventing him from being on the ballot deprives the people of this country from their ability to choose the, their own leader. And that is possibly uh, the greatest power that the people have in this country. So I think it is case closed. The elections will decide who our next president is. And I think the American people very much want us to move on and work on issues that are affecting their daily lives, like the high cost of prescription drugs, our crumbling infrastructure, the need for more skilled workers, and uh, reforming our immigration laws, to name just a few. So you've got a tough job. Uh, there are controversial positions you must take. And from time to time, you are the subject of 
ridicule. All important people are at some point or another. Late night comedian Stephen Colbert. I'm not sure if you watched that show, but he gave you a hard time last night. The senator who has most successfully talked herself into believing that she believes in something is Maine Republican Susan Collins. She now says she probably shouldn't have said she believes Trump has learned his lesson from the fallout from his dealings with Ukraine and impeachment. She now says a better word would have been hopes. <laughs> yes. And a better word for Senator Susan Collins would be former Senator Susan Collins. Stephen Colbert, if he was standing here right now, what would your response be? Well, I'm pleased to say that I never watch him. Uh, but uh, what I would say to him, and I think this is what bothers those on the far left, is I vote my conscience. And I do what I think is right. I, nobody studies issues more carefully than I do. Sometimes I vote with the president. Sometimes I vote against him. You can't pigeonhole me. And it's because in the more than 7,000 votes that I've cast, and I've never missed a one, by the way, I always look at each issue on the merits. I think that that's what the people of Maine deserve from me, and, uh, and a late night comedian isn't going to change how I approach my job. Hunter Biden, where is that guy and why do so many people protect him? We asked the senator about Hunter Biden. Well, if the witness motion had passed in the Senate and I voted to allow a limited number of witnesses that would have been chosen by both sides, I suspect that the president's attorneys would have called Hunter Biden and that the uh, House managers would have called John Bolton. And that would have been fine with me. I think both of them are relevant witnesses and to me it should be up to the attorneys on both sides to decide which witnesses that they wanted. I was disappointed that that did not occur in either the House or the Senate so that we would have had a fuller picture and filled in some of the gaps. I'll tell you though the the person who I personally would have liked to have had called was Ambassador Sondland because his testimony was very contradictory and neither side resolved those contradictions to my satisfaction. On the one hand, he says in a phone call that the president told him that there was absolutely no quid pro quo. On the other hand, when he testified before the House, he said that he presumed that there was a quid pro quo. So those are very contradictory and deserved a lot more uh, questioning. So if I were picking, he would have been at the top of my list. Yeah, I remember Gordon Sondland. That was a wild day. It was all over the place. You said recently in an interview that you believe President Trump has learned from this case, and you went on to add that he will be much more cautious in the future. He's learned from this, and he'll be much more cautious. What specifically makes you say that? How does he appear at all more cautious at this point? Those were my aspirations, those were my hopes would be the outcome of this case and so many Republicans joined me in saying that the president's call was inappropriate, it was wrong to enlist the help of a foreign uh, government to investigate a political rival. Uh, the president, however, also did mention his concerns about European uh, contributions to uh, Ukraine, so there was a mixed motive there. Um, I, I hope that given that all the president has gone through, and after all, he said that he did not like having impeachment be part of his resume, I think was, was his phrase. Um, I would hope that he would have learned from the experience and would be more cautious about his language on phone calls like this one in the future. But clearly, 
Charlie, that's a hope, not a prediction. So, Senator, you have a reputation of being a moderate, and you're open to at least siding with Democrats sometimes. But on two key issues, very high-profile issues, Brett Kavanaugh a year ago or so, uh, now this, you went with the Republican Party. You know that a lot of folks back home are furious with you over that. You've got a real political challenge on your hand when it comes to your reelection. Maybe you would have been just safer if you um, stuck with the Republicans all along and not done this political or maybe it's not political, but this very public kind of decision making process where you're open to possibly going the other way. Well, there have been important issues where I've opposed the president. For example, I think as a matter of the constitutional prerogatives of the Congress, that even though I support stronger border security, as does the president, I do not believe that he has the authority to move funds that were duly appropriated, that he signed into law, uh, from essential military construction projects projects and use them to build a border law, so a border wall rather. So that's an area where I disagree with the president. Look, all I can do is what I think is right. And one of the problems nowadays is if you are in the center, if you don't tow the party line on either side, you get a barrage of criticism, death threats, literally death threats and uh, vile attacks on not only me, my family, and my staff. And I feel badly for my family and my staff that they have to go through that as well. But I have an obligation to live up to the oath that I took as a senator and to the oath that I took uh, to do impartial justice in the impeachment trial. And that's what I did. Did. And um, my hope is even voters who may disagree with me on some of these votes will look at my record as being the most bipartisan senator in all of America year after year after year and realize that that's the approach that allows us to solve problems in this country. Senator Collins, thank you so much. We've heard about those threats, by the way. Very disturbing. Sorry you're going through that. Please be safe. I know your staff is taking precautions, but Senator Susan Collins, Republican from Maine, thank you very much. We hope to have you back soon. Thank you, Greg. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing news channel now in 65 million homes. Get Newsmax TV on all the major cable systems or go to NewsmaxTV.com and click on the Find Newsmax tab to locate us. Remember, Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.